In 2003, the skeptical magazine Fortean Times claimed that no such craft or Nazi secret space program had ever existed. But we have been given patents from leading German manufacturing companies, including Juha, Krupps and BMW, which prove beyond all reasonable doubt that Hitler considered the Nazi secret space program a top priority. And more than 15 billion Deutschmarks were spent developing craft of all shapes and sizes. Secret memos from SS officers revealed that Werner von Braun and Hitler both believed that there were alien civilizations in the universe. And it was their intention to not only conquer all nations on planet Earth, but to also colonize the moon. decisive step in the conquest of space will be the placing of an object into an orbit wherein it will indefinitely circle the Earth. 1954. Sputnik 1 shocks the world and puts the USSR way ahead in the Cold War. Sputnik 2 takes a dog into space the first living creature to leave the face of planet Earth. Russia then shocks the world by sending an unmanned probe to the moon. Meanwhile, the US Army plan Project Horizon, a plan to colonize the moon with Americans. This plan was soon abandoned when the true nature of the hostile environment of outer space was discovered by American and Russian scientists. Nineteen fifty eight. Spectacular rocket failures destroy American morale. The Explorer 1 space probe confirms planet Earth is surrounded by dangerous radiation. Radiation so powerful that it could cause nausea and cancer. The Van Allen radiation belts and solar particles from the Sun are extremely hazardous to humans. Space is also full of micrometeorites which can rip through spacesuits and metal in the blink of an eye. Meanwhile, Russia celebrate getting the first man into space, Mr. Yuri Gagarin. Well, there was already a parallel space program, and it had been continuing from even before the time that NASA was created in 1958, October 1958, NASA were were incorporated by President Eisenhower. The secret space program was run by the Department of Defense. It took its original form in Project Horizon, which was established in 1959. The 
habitation of the uh, colonization of the moon. The reason for that was that any that whoever controlled the moon controlled the earth. If you could uh, launch rockets from the moon onto your enemies on earth, they couldn't possibly retaliate, therefore you had the upper hand. There was a serious attempt, uh, certainly a serious investigation, to put man on the moon and keep him there. So the secret parallel space program continues to this day. There is a military space shuttle, and even the ones that we see from Columbia onwards um, are designed according to the specification of the Department of Defense. If you look at them, they will carry spy satellites into orbit. And if you want to know what a spy satellite looks like, the Hubble telescope is one. That is the design of what's called the KH-12 the keyhole satellites, which are used today over enemy territory which is presumably any territory that is not American. Regardless of the dangers of radiation, and without having spacesuits nor spacecraft which can protect the occupants from radiation, NASA convinced the American people to pay $40 billion for the space program. The most lethal forms of radiation, of course, are at the higher end of the spectrum. That's gamma rays and X-rays. Uh, we know what ultraviolet can do. If you stay out too long in the sun, you get sunburn and skin cancer and die, and it's all very sad. But gamma rays, and X-rays especially, are particularly lethal to humans, unprotected humans. There was no protection that I have been able to identify. I've been found no reference to it. I find nothing that will tell me what level of protection is offered, so I have to assume none was. I've contacted the manufacturers of the spacesuits and they said there was no radiation protection built into the spacesuits because I asked them if these same spacesuits could be used by technicians to go to Chernobyl or Three Mile Island because the nuclear reactors produce the same radiation as produced in space. They said no, not advisable, no protection. Ex-Nazis were now in charge of vast amounts of tax dollars. In today's value, the Nazis at the heart of the NASA space program were given more than $600 billion. All NASA had to do was announce a new space project and the money was handed over so that the American government could save face in the Cold War. Alan Shepard and John Glenn were blasted into space using equipment which was still in the prototype stage. John Glenn reports UFOs to mission control, which he describes as looking like fireflies, similar to the Foo Fighters reported by pilots during World War II. Werner von Braun and Hermann Oberth were later to confess that they both believe alien life forms exist and may have already visited planet Earth in the past. NASA soon learn that we are not alone in the universe.
In Jonathan Eisen's excellent book, Suppressed Inventions, he interviews Werner von Braun's mentor and teacher, Dr. Hermann Oberth. Dr. Oberth makes it quite clear that he has studied the aeronautic performance of UFOs. In 1972, Dr. Hermann Oberth made the following statement. Today, we cannot produce machines that fly the same as UFOs do. They are flying by means of artificial fields of gravity. This would explain the sudden changes of directions. This hypothesis would also explain the piling up of these disks into a cylindrical or cigar-shaped mothership upon leaving the Earth. Because it is in this fashion that only one field of gravity would be required for all the flying saucers. Dr. Oberth then added, We cannot take credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields alone we have been helped and we have been helped by the people of other worlds dr herman oberth was the greatest pioneer of astronautics herman oberth made his statement in 1972 Almost 20 years later, in 1991, amateur footage of UFOs stacked up in a cylindrical formation was filmed in Mexico City. It's a monopoly that is being conducted through science about the possibilities of finding life in a different planet or satellite in the space. We have many other reasons to believe that NASA has been lying in every respect. It's very difficult to know if the politicians know the real truth or not. We know that there is government inside the government. We know that there is a military intelligence. We know that in America, after the Manhattan Project was created, that group subsists. And that group was the one who handled the Roswell crash, the Socorro crash, and others. Are you talking about Majestic 12? Yeah, probably it's a different name now. Now it's not Majestic 12, now it's something else. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. The Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. In pursuit of this obligation, since 1947, we have received and analyzed between one and 2,000 reports. It's very difficult to know if Bush and Blair and others are puppets, or they are innocent, or they are the mastermind. What we really know is that uh, there are many who decide together what to do in any kind of situation.
The Russians now have a very different policy around this phenomenon. We have to remember that when Gorbachev met Reagan, many times he asked about the technology that the United States have obtained from the others. And always Reagan joking replied to Gorbachev, what did you do with it too? They never said we are speaking about alien technology, but many times they spoke about the other technology. And we know that Gorbachev renounced to the race, the cold era because he learned that the United States had technology from these beings. From the greys. From the greys. <laughs> from then on, we saw many cosmonauts talking openly about what they saw we have different videos recorded by these cosmonauts where you can see strange things floating in the space. Non ho fatto in tempo a prendere la macchina fotografica o una videocamera perché è sparito da circa 7 secondi. A che voli te l'hanno calcoi certo di lì? Eravamo sopra il Newfoundland. Il Terranova. We have also something very important which is a video taken inside the space agency in Russia, where you can see the mirror surrounded by dozens of bright objects. This is Mission Control Houston. We are using the payload bay cameras right now to hopefully catch a glimpse of the Russian space station mirror as it performs an on-orbit burn. The uh, payload bay cameras are positioned such that they're looking straight back back straight back behind the orbiter where the mirror is flying at about 850 nautical miles behind it. No joy from here, sorry. Hope it was a good one though for our friends. Thank you, sir. We could not see it here either. We'll wait two or three more minutes till sunrise and then uh, at that time give you a go for KU Stowe. We're at mission lapse time of 7 days, 13 hours, and 17 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, Mir Space Station is now visible. Yeah, we do see something flashing visually, but we're not sure that that might be... Uh... This shot was obtained by the shuttle, by the Americans. NASA never released that piece of video. It means that we have two different positions. One that is openly saying, yes, we have experience out in the space. That's the Russians. The Russians. And we have the other, which is the NASA explanation that there is nothing in there. They don't release anything. We have to obtain every evidence from an outside source, but not from NASA. <laughs>